Back in the year 2000, not many people would have predicted just how popular Nokia's recently released 3310 would go on to be. By the time it was discontinued in 2005, it had gone on to sell a staggering 126 million units. Nokia eventually lost the smartphone wars, being sold to Microsoft in 2014. Microsoft shuttered the company and sold off the Nokia brand name to HMD Global. Which brings us to the 3310 2017 edition. First announced at Mobile World Congress 2017, the excitement exceeded that of the other Android releases. So does HMD's revival live up to its promise, or does it struggle to find its place in our modern world? The new 3310 takes its inspiration from the earlier devices, but with some changes. It can now be found in four colours, red, yellow, grey and dark blue. The blue navigation button has been replaced by a D-pad for navigation and access in the menu. Gone is the proprietary Nokia charging point, and in its place is the industry standard micro USB port. The new device is 55 grams lighter, thanks to a larger capacity, but physically smaller battery. There have been other improvements too, like the inclusion of Bluetooth, a two megapixel camera, and dual SIM support. Unfortunately, since it only supports 2G networks, it won't be available in Singapore or Australia, both of which have phased out 2G. It also isn't currently available in the United States, as it runs on different GSM bands. However, HMD Global have said they are committed to bringing this and other devices to the States. The 3310 runs on Series 30 Plus software. Now, unlike previous Nokia releases, this wasn't actually developed by Nokia, but by the Taiwanese company MediaTek. They have done a pretty good job though of replicating the original Nokia software. Opening the menu gives you access to standard apps like messaging, call logs, separate photo and video galleries, and the camera. There is even a version of Opera Mini for your 2G browsing needs. Where it breaks from the Nokia of old is in craftsmanship. There are a number of software bugs and quirks which simply wouldn't have been found in older Nokia devices, like being unable to change the date and time from 2015. Unlike many feature phones, the 3310 does feature a 2 megapixel camera. Given that most smartphone cameras are over 10 megapixels, the resulting photos do seem quite disappointing. They look fine on the phone's smaller screen, but as soon as you view them up close, they appear blurry and lacking in any detail. The phone only has 16 megabytes of storage, which isn't a lot of space for photos and videos. Luckily, it does support expandable storage, which you can use to store music and play back using the phone's media player. HMD made a big deal that the popular game Snake would be returning to the 3310. What they didn't mention is that it wouldn't be a new version of the game. Instead, it is Game Loss Snake Zenzia, which was first released in the mid 2000s. Battery life is one of the key reasons many people still use feature phones. The battery life on the 3310 is one of its key strengths as it can last up to 31 days on a single charge. HMD even claims that you can get 22 hours of talk time out of the device. For my part, I found that I didn't need to charge it even once during testing. Despite some of its positives, the 3310 is majorly let down by its price. Its roughly $55 price tag puts it far above the competition. For example, this phone from Alcatel can be bought in the UK for just 79 pence, which is roughly a dollar, with 10 pounds of credit. Now, it doesn't have a camera or dual SIM support, but it can do almost everything else that the 3310 can do. It's difficult to recommend this phone as it is far too expensive. The 3310 isn't a bad feature phone. In fact, dual SIM support and long battery life make it great for traveling or for putting in your car for emergencies. However, most of the features on the 3310 are easily found on much cheaper handsets. This makes HMD's 3310 feel more like a cynical cash-in than a return of the once beloved brand. Make sure to head over to makeuseof.com for the full review. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to press like and subscribe for more weekly tech videos.